Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Vijay Sai, a final year MBBS student from Ames Mangalgiri. And in these videos, I will be discussing all the basic concepts of medicine. And if you are a person like me who is very enthusiastic to know why something is happening or how something is happening rather than mugging it, then you are in the right place. In these videos, we will try to know all the basic mechanisms which will be essential for all the MBBS students and also for the students who are are practicing for the neat ug these videos are very helpful for them i can guarantee that and i'll try to make these videos as short as possible so i can preserve your valuable time we'll get started and our first topic of discussion today is the cardiac cycle the textbook definition of cardiac cycle is it is the series of electrical and mechanical events occurring in the heart in a single heartbeat to make it easier one cardiac cycle constitutes of one atrial systole plus diastole or ventricular systole plus diastole it is never one atrial systole plus one ventricular diastole when it is mentioned as only systole or diastole it is considered for ventricular systole and ventricular diastole please make it clear and duration of each cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds when we have considered the normal heart rate as 75 beats per minute 60 by 75 is equal to 0.8 seconds out of which 0.3 seconds will be the systolic phase and 0.5 seconds will be the diastolic phase and please make this clear that events occurring in the left heart is same as that of the events occurring in the right heart and i'll be depicting only the events occurring in the left heart because left heart is a high pressure circuit whereas the right heart is a low pressure circuit the pressure changes are more evident in the left side of the heart and as i cannot draw all these four chambers every time i'll try to depict only the events in the left heart and all these events are same as in that of the right heart okay guys now we'll start discussing the phases of the cardiac cycle and before discussing the phases we should know that blood always tries to move from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure and there are two walls present in the heart or left side of the heart one is the bicuspid wall and one is the aortic wall these walls will prevent the back flow of the blood from one chamber to the other chamber and now we will start with the first phase that is atrial contraction when the sa node fires it generates electrical impulses and these impulses transmits to the atria when these impulses reach atria the atria will start contracting and this contraction leads to pumping of the blood from the atria to the ventricle which is called as active ventricular filling this active ventricular filling comprises of only 20% of the total ventricular filling remaining 80% is due to the passive transfer and this passive transfer will be discussed in the later section this active filling is only for 20% from this we can tell that atrial failure is not that much significant as ventricular failure because even if atria fails 80% is transferred passively right this 20% will come to play only when the person is needing a more cardiac output like when the person is doing some exercise or uh, he is an athlete he needs more blood right then this 20% will come to play and the person will start experiencing symptoms when his atria fails and here we have to know the concept of jugular venous pressure also jugular venous pressure is nothing but the pressure in the jugular veins this pressure is an indirect measure of the pressure in the atria we cannot go to the atria and directly measure the pressure right so we measure this jugular venous pressure and we can identify the pathologies which are present in the atria due to the pumping action of atria due to the contraction of atria the pressure inside the atria rises leading to a wave in the jvp a wave is due to the contraction of the atria during the phase of atrial contraction when the atria completes the contract also called as end of atrial systole then the left ventricle starts to contract as the impulse starts transmitting to the ventricle initially the pressure inside the atria will be around 5 mm of mercury but the pressure inside the ventricle will be lesser than the atria so the blood is moving from atria to the ventricle when the ventricle starts contracting the pressure in the ventricle will start to build up right when this pressure increases this atrial pressure of 5 mm of mercury pressure the bicuspid wall which is present between the atria and ventricle closes to prevent the back flow backward flow from ventricle to the atria and this closure of bicuspid wall when the left ventricular pressure is exceeded more than 5 mm of mercury will produce the first heart sound or s1 after this as we can see in this picture the aortic valve is closed and the bicuspid wall has just now closed see the now the ventricle is a closed chamber now the ventricle starts contracting in a closed chamber this is also called as isovolumetric contraction and before this isovolumetric contraction the ventricular diastole has ended right 
this is called as the volume of blood present in the ventricle now is called as the end diastolic volume and this end diastolic volume is the sum of all the four volumes these volumes will be discussed later when the ventricle contracts in an isovolumetric chamber its pressure increases from 5 to 10 to 20 to 30 ventricle is a thicker muscle right it contracts well and this generates huge amount of amounts of pressure and the pressure in the iota is 80 millimeters of mercury or diastolic pressure is 80 millimeters of mercury when this pressure exceeds 80 millimeters of mercury in the ventricle then only the ventricular blood can push the valves the aortic valves and the blood can go into the iota right until then the ventricle lies in the phase of isovolumetric contraction and also what is happening in the atria due in the initial phase of ventricular contraction the bicuspid valve will bulge into the atria this bulge also creates a pressure wave in the JVP which results in the C wave of the JVP and next what happens the ventricular pressure increases to more than 80 millimeters of mercury and then this blood will push open the aortic valve and then the opening of the aortic valve will create a communication between ventricle and the iota now we have to know the property of the iota iota has elasticity in it so it can accommodate blood in it it can expand and it can maintain less pressures that means whatever blood is going to here whatever pressure is there in the ventricle it is easily transmitted into the iota and the iota expands keeping the pressure same as that of the ventricle if the ventricular pressure increases to 90, 100, 110, the same pressure will be maintained in the iota also. And in the initial phases of ejection or the rapid ejection phase, what happens is, during the isovolumetric contraction, the ventricle has contracted so much, right? This high tension is kept in the walls of the ventricle and whenever the aortic valve is opened, this high tension will create a rapid ejection of the blood from the ventricle to the iota. This rapid ejection phase is uh, last lesser time than the slow ejection phase and most of the volume of the blood is transmitted during this rapid ejection phase only due to the tension created in the ventricular walls during the isovolumetric contraction and in the rapid ejection phases and then blood directly goes to the iota and the pressure rises from 80 to 120 millimeters of mercury in a normal person and in atria what is happening the bicuspid wall is closed right here the atria will start acting as a reservoir it collects all the blood which is coming from the lungs and this collection of the blood will create the V wave in the JVP everybody should know what is the reason of the A wave, C wave and B waves in the JVP now the rapid ejection phase has completed the ventricle started contraction right these contraction forces will reduce this gradually when this contraction force is reduced the pressure inside the ventricle will also be reduced right moreover more of most of the blood has gone into the iota right the pressure inside the ventricle is reduced. This ventricular pressure drops below 80 millimeters of mercury. But aortic pressure will not drop. Even though the ventricle and iota act as the same chamber, the aortic pressure will drop till 80 millimeters of mercury only. Below that, the iota will squeeze the blood and it will maintain the pressure, but the ventricle cannot do that. The pressure in the ventricle drops further. And this is the phase of slow or reduced ejection phase. Here what happens? The ventricular pressure is less than 80 but aortic pressure is more than 80. Now you can tell me here it is the high pressure area and it is the low pressure area. The blood should be moving from iota to the ventricle right. But here what happens is due to the forward momentum uh, of the blood which is created during the rapid ejection phase or due to the stored potential energy of the blood during the rapid ejection phase due to this potential energy the blood tends to move from ventricle to the iota only. Even though the pressure is pressure gradient is reverse due to the stored potential energy the blood will go from ventricle to the iota only this is the phase of slow or reduced ejection phase this phase lasts longer than the rapid ejection phase and then what happens the contraction of the ventricles is completed now the ventricle starts to relax as there are no electrical impulses the ventricle starts to relax when the ventricle relaxes pressure drops even further when the pressure drops even further this aortic wall will close why this aortic wall will close if the pressure is less in the ventricle right if it is not close the backward flow may occur right now the aortic valve closes and this closure of the aortic valve will produce a second heart sound or s2 so the s2 is produced immediately after the slow of a slow reduced ejection phase or before the isovolumetric relaxation phase now what happens the ventricle uh, keeps on relaxing in a closed chamber because the aortic valve has closed and the bicuspid valve has been closed for a long time in a closed chamber, this isovolumetric relaxation occurs, the ventricle starts to relax 
and the pressure drops from 80 millimeters of mercury to 5 millimeters of mercury. Why 5? If the pressure is less than 5, then only the bicuspid spread valve can open, right? This 80 to 5 millimeters of mercury pressure changes occur during the isovolumetric relaxation. And during this phase also, the atria acts as a reservoir. When the left ventricular pressure drops below 5 millimeters of mercury, then only the bicuspid valve opens and then the ventricle starts filling. This is the stage of end systole guys. Here the systole has stopped and then the ventricle starts relaxing, right? The volume of blood which lies during this phase is called as end systolic volume and the volume of blood which is pumped into the iota is called as stroke volume. And now the filling of the ventricles will occur. This filling of the ventricles occurs in three phases that is rapid passive ventricular filling, slow passive ventricular filling and ventricular filling through the aortic contraction which sorry atrial contraction which we have discussed in the first phase. Now what happens? To this end systolic volume there will be addition of blood. This addition of blood will be in three phases as we have discussed. The first phase is rapid passive ventricular filling. Immediately if the uh, bicuspid valve opens, there is so much of blood collected in the atria right? all this blood will rush into the ventricles very rapidly. This is called as rapid, passive. This is passive. There is no need of atrial contraction. Right? There is always already a pressure gradient. So much blood has been pulled into the atria. This blood will come rush into the ventricles. This is passive ventricular filling. The first phase is also called as rapid passive ventricular filling. And sometimes this rush of blood may create a third heart zone or S3. And then what happens? The blood has already reached, that has collected in the atria, that has already reached into the ventricle during the RPVF or rapid passive ventricular phase. Now, the atria will act as a conduit. It acts just as a pipe. It, the blood which is coming from the lungs will move through the atria and then come fall into the ventricle. This phase is called as slow passive ventricular filling as the filling is slow during this phase. And this end systolic volume, rapid passive ventricular filling and slow passive ventricular filling constitutes of 80% of the ventricular filling or 80% of the end diastolic volume and the remaining 20% is due to the active ventricular filling due to, during the atrial contraction phase and finally the cycle comes to its beginning phase that is ventricular filling through the atrial contraction new cycle begins for every 0.8 seconds till you die okay guys now we have completed the discussion on the phases of the cardiac cycle now we will see what phase comes under the atrial systole, atrial diastole, ventricular systole and ventricular diastole. Systole is, systole is nothing but the contraction phase and the diastole is relaxation phase. Atrial systole consists of only the atrial contraction. Remaining all these phases are atrial diastole. And when the ventricle is contracting, it is during the isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection phase, slow ejection phase. All these three phases constitute the ventricular systole and this isovolumetric relaxation phase RPVF, SPVF and the atrial contraction phase constitutes the diastole of the ventricle. So the ventricular systole is isovolumetric contraction, rapid ejection phase, slow ejection phase. Then the ventricle starts relaxing right? It is the diastolic phase of the ventricle. This ventricular systole consists of 0.3 seconds and this ventricular diastole comprises for 0.5 seconds. And the total cardiac cycle is 0.8 seconds. Is it clear? Now we will see some points about the S1 and S2 and the major differences among them. S1 is due to the bicuspid valve closure, that is before the isovolumetric contraction. And S2 is nothing but closure of the aortic valve creates this sound, and this is before the isovolumetric relaxation. And I'll tell you an analogy how to remember this S1 and S2 regarding the pitch and the duration. S1 is nothing but it's like a boy's proposal. It will be of low pitch and long duration. He will try to propose for long duration. He will write some paragraphs like that and it is of low pitch. He is very afraid during the proposal, right? So it is of long duration and low pitch. And S2 is like a girl's rejection. She will tell no in a high pitch. It is S2 is high pitch and it is only for a less duration. She will not talk much. She will tell no and just goes up from that place. So, S1 is low pitch and long duration and S2 is high pitch and less duration. Okay guys, now we will try to depict all these events using this graph. In my first year MBBS, I found it very difficult to draw this graph but using all these concepts we have discussed, we will try to make it easier. Now, first what happens to the ventricular pressure? What happens to the ventricular pressure in the atrial contraction? 
it slightly increases and during iso volumetric contraction it reaches to 80 mm of mercury and during the rapid ejection phase uh, this ventricular pressure will go to 120 mm of mercury and then due, during the slow ejection phase this pressure drops below 80 but due to the forward momentum the blood will be going into the aorta and during iso volumetric relaxation the ventricle relaxes and then the pressure drops greatly and during the rapid ventricular filling and slow ventricular filling the pressure remains low and what happens to the aortic pressure the aortic pressure changes only during the rapid ejection phase and slow ejection phase during rapid ejection phase along with the ventricles the pressure will be reflected into the aorta and the aortic pressure also will increase but aortic pressure decrease will be up to 80 mm of mercury only it does not go below 80 mm of mercury because aorta is an elastic tube it can squeeze the blood and maintain the pressure inside it next what happens to the ventricular volume during atrial contraction the 20% active filling will cause increase in the ventricular contraction ventricular volume and then during isovolumetric contraction there is no change in the volume of the ventricles during rapid ejection phase there is a rapid decrease in the ventricular volume during the slow ejection phase the, the decrease will be somewhat less the slope will be less during the isovolumetric relaxation the ventricular volume will be constant and during rapid ventricular filling and slow passive ventricular filling the volume of the ventricles will increase as there is a filling of ventricles what happens to the jvp or atrial pressure during the atrial contraction we have observed during due to the contraction of the atria we will have observed the a wave of the jvp and during isovolumetric contraction the in the initial phases of ventricular contraction due to the bulging of the walls into the atria we have seen the c wave and we will observe another wave that is called as v wave in the jvp due to the collection of blood into the atria due to its reservoir action this blood will be accumulating will uh, generate a small pressure change which will create a v wave and finally the phonocardiogram or heart sounds the first heart sound is observed after the atrial contraction or in the initial stages of ventricular contraction where the pressure exceeds 5 mm of mercury and the bicuspid valve closes producing the first heart sound or s1 it is of longer duration and low pitch and then the second heart sound is observed after the slow ejection phase or before the isovolumetric relaxation and this is due to the closure of aortic wall and this is called as s2 it is high pitched and lesser duration thank you guys